I'm in the process of replacing a pair of my 15-year-old sawhorses that have been a key component of my workshop. I recommend the early fine woodworking article by Sam Allen in the issue September-October 1980, number 24. Although his drawing, shown here, is weak and without angles and dimensions, the text of the article is quite informational. In the following steps, I'll show how I go about building this classic sawhorse. I take advantage of symmetry wherever possible in SketchUp modeling as it eliminates redundant work. In this case, I can model up one quadrant of the sawhorse and then copy to all other corners. The starting point in SketchUp and in the shop is the saddle, a 2 by 6 42 inches long. One quarter of the saddle is this rectangular piece, 2 and 3 quarters inches wide, 21 inches long, and 1 and a half inches thick. And Later on, we'll copy this quadrant to complete the full assembly. But here we have one piece of the saddle. And to it, I will add the leg. And I know that this leg is about three and a half inches off the end of the saddle. So I'm going to mark that point and start to draw in a leg, but I'll draw it perpendicular at this point. It's a two by six. No, I'm sorry, it's a one by six. So it's 28 inches long, and it's five and a half inches wide. That's the standard width of a one by six. And I'll bring it up on the blue axis and create a perpendicular leg. Make it a component. And, of course, there are no angles at this point. And this needs to be rotated in a compound angle, 75 degrees, in both, uh, in both directions. So I'm going to edit the component and give it its three-quarter inch thickness. And that thickness goes internal to the saddle. And then do the two 75 degree angles starting with the angle in the longitudinal direction, in the red axis direction in this case. So I want the green color and I'm going to rotate 75 degrees. Actually I'll just go 15 degrees, 90 minus 75. So that's one of the compound angles. And now we need to rotate it from the end view. And that would be on the red axis. And I'll connect right at this seam here and bring the leg up 15, swing it up 15 degrees. So now we've got a compound compound angle situation, which are always a little bit difficult, but I'll try to make it work in the easiest way possible. So we need a cutout for this joint, a cutout in the, um, well, let me just go ahead and shape this leg as he describes in the article, come down eight inches and there's a tapering of this leg 
so that it is three and a half inches down at the bottom at the foot and the taper starts eight inches down from the top of the leg. So I can push that waist out and that's that gives it a nice looking shape and connects to the ground a little bit better with that smaller foot. But notice here that the leg is not protruding fully through the top surface of the saddle and I need it to do that to trim this top of this leg so that it is flush with the top surface of the saddle. So I'm just going to pull it up just a little bit so that it slices through the top surface of the saddle. I can use intersect function to create that gain, that cutout. I'll select all the surfaces and do an intersect faces with the model. It's best if I have a look inside and I'll hide the leg and then turn on X-ray so that I can identify the missing edges here. There's a I pick the line tool and connect these two endpoints to complete the faces of this cutout. Okay, turn off X-ray and delete the two edges and expose the joint detail that just fits the leg perfectly. Okay, unhide the leg and we've got some trimming to do on this this leg so that it is flush with the top surface of the saddle. And I can use intersect again but this time with the leg in edit mode and turning on all, all the faces and edit faces with model. But I'm missing one edge here on, on this front side right here. Now we've got a complete face down there flush and I can delete all the upper waist material. And while I'm at it I'll change the color of that face, reverse faces. Now there's only one other component that needs to be made and that is the braces that are made from one by sixes. And I'll use the shapes of the existing components to create that. I want to get a little connection here. Uh, there it is. Okay. Now I get a connection with this and pick the line tool. Now I can draw a line. I'm trying I will do the boundary of the brace but only a half of the brace. That will be copied in the quadrant to make the hole eventually. 
and I'll go down um, five and a half inches. Uh, that's not the best way of. I'm going to cancel that guideline. That's not going to give me the bottom of the brace. I'll just draw a line here which is on the boundary and bring it down about five inches. It has to be less than five and a half this component to fit a one by six. Go over on the green axis, tap the left arrow key and come up to the connection that we made before. There's half of the brace but without thickness I'll make that a component and then use push-pull to create the the three-quarter inch thickness of the brace. Note that that push-pull does exactly what it's supposed to do and but it creates an interference up here which I will bevel the top edge by adding a couple lines and bevel the cut out that top surface there so that it snugs up against the bottom face of the of the saddle. Okay, so these are the three parts that are modeled. And oh, I need to copy the saddle. There's an inside a brace as well, not saddle, a brace. So I'll just copy that same brace and pull it into position on the other side of the leg. Make sure I get that connected in the right place. I held it on the red axis with the right arrow key. So that's a full quadrant with everything in place. The screws are not shown yet, and I'll do that later. Um, oh, the leg should be also trimmed at the bottom, and we'll make the height of the saw horse 24 inches. So I just drew a guideline down 24 inches and now I'm creating a cut cutting plane with the rectangle tool. It's not quite big enough. I need it to completely envelop the bottom of the leg. So I'll just pull this out on the red axis and again use uh, intersect, open the leg for edit and then select all faces and intersect and I should be able to delete all of this material on the bottom for a nice fit on the floor. 24 inches high to the top surface of the saddle. Okay, now I think I'm done with a quadrant. So I can copy that whole assembly and move down the red axis, flip on the red axis, Reconnect in the middle.
and we've got half of the sawhorse. Again, copy all. And this time move along the red on the green axis and flip along the green axis. Match them up and we've got a complete sawhorse. The editing necessary here is to uh, get rid of these lines in the middle um, on the saddle and also on the brace and change the component to the whole the whole saddle and the whole brace. Here's the final assembly.